Uh, so anyway, hi, chat realm. Yeah. Glad you could join us. We'll be starting the actual show. Right? About. That didn't, that didn't work. No. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 105 for Wednesday, the 7th of December, 2016. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, that is Kent, and with us tonight is the one, the only, the other adjective, Crunchy! Hi, Crunchy. Hi. What's up? Welcome back. How have you been? Um, you know, the usual. It's the ups and downs, peaks and valleys. Shit. Uh, I, I, I cannot express in, in, you know, using my words, how anticlimactic that whole thing was. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. Yeah. That's oh a, man, I, I love the descriptive words that Crunchy used, and the just the yeah, you know, I've got true feel for everything that's been going on in her life. Really painted a picture for uh, for the <laughs> listeners, and uh, you know, it's a big build up to nothing. That's that's uh, that's my life, that, possibly everybody's life. That might just be life. That, that was that was my entire first marriage. If that counts, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey Crunchy, do you decorate for Christmas? I have a Christmas tree. Oh, is it up? That's did you put it up yet? It is up. When did you, can I ask when you put it up? Uh, I think like a day or two after Thanksgiving. Okay, so that's the acceptable time frame, right? Like after Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> last year I put it up before Thanksgiving, and everyone yelled at me. So. <laughs> well, that's not yeah, nice. I, yeah, I, I I'm a firm believer. One, eh, I am a firm believer to that we should have one holiday at a time. So let's get Halloween out of the way before we start doing any of the other holidays. Let's get Thanksgiving out of the way before we do Christmas. Uh, I personally, I think Christmas is it's a special holiday and it should be treated like a special holiday. So let's let's like condense it to like a couple of weeks. Uh, so I personally like to wait until December to that Christmas. And that's that's what I did this last week. Uh, okay. And I dragged everything out and put up the, the decorations. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just every every holiday at a time, like one at a time, absolutely. Halloween is so underrated and like and they'll put like Halloween decorations out and then the next day they'll have Christmas decorations. Yeah. And that's not fair because that, Halloween needs more room in, because they have the best fake eyelashes. And that's in like April. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's get there. Yeah. It's it's almost that bad because yeah, the the Christmas decorations. I think I saw Christmas trees at Walmart before the Halloween costumes came out. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know why this gets talked about every year? Like every year, it's like, oh my god, everybody's talking about how early the shit's going out. You know why they're still talking about it? Because every year it gets earlier. It used yeah. to be you had to have the Thanksgiving stuff down before the Christmas stuff put up, and then the Christmas stuff started creeping into November. And I was like, okay, they, they can kind of coexist. I mean, you know, okay. And then it started cre creeping it even further. And now it's like, hey, uh, we need to knock out these two shelves right here because that's going to be Christmas stuff and that's going to be Thanksgiving stuff. And pretty soon it's going to be or, or, or Halloween stuff. And pretty soon it's going to be like, hey, 4th of July, here's some sparklers and some tinsel. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. No doubt. I'm, I'm surprised they don't have the Valentine's Day and Easter candy out yet. Right. right. Candy expires, though. Does uh, it? I mean, <laughs> I mean even, even if it does, does it? <laughs> yeah, does it doesn't. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, candy's got to be kind of like way past the expiration date before someone's like, you know, I'm just not going to eat this Snickers bar. Like this little, <laughs> this mini sticker Snickers is not because it could be like a year over and somebody would be like, no, fuck it. I'll eat it, man. Cool. I'm, 
I'm down. But I've seen I've seen the expired candy and the chocolate gets all like spotty and I don't even know what that is. Like just, <laughs> chocolate doesn't mold, does it? Um, I don't know. I I remember when I was a kid when Halloween was coming up, I would find my Halloween candy from last year that I still had. And it was still edible. <laughs> well, you know what? I have worked retail for way too long and I had to keep like back stocking and down stocking and front facing everything. And I've definitely found like three year old candy and it expires. <laughs> wow. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely something interesting. Um, so crunchy, uh, how was like, I would ask you, cause normally this is probably where I'd ask you how your week was. And you tell me some bullshit story about how much your life is so much fucking better than mine. And, and we would just move on <laughs> with life and, and cause you, I mean, you, you don't have all the troubles that I have and I don't have the troubles you have. And we're just going to look at each other like, Oh my God, I want that so bad. But what it really comes down to is you live in Austin. Like give us some outrageous shit that happened this week. Cause you have an outrageous job. You live in an amazing city and you're like moving up in life. Just personally, like you've got to have some kind of crazy ass story for us this week. I always have crazy ass stories. Um, and like I say this every fucking time and I need to get better at it. Um, I don't like telling work stories because it's this relates to my thingy at the end. But anyways, um, like it's kind of a, even if I don't say names, I don't it's probably not information that should be public. But um, I can tell like work stories that don't relate to the actual like dead people. And they're funny. Like, okay. Um, so first of all, work has been like fucking insane for me. Cause I have to drive seizure boy around everywhere. Cause he can't drive. And, um, <laughs> so <laughs> seizure boy. <laughs> <You're a superhero. laughs> okay. Um, so we, we hang out and everything like we're friends and everything, but I've already told him, that he's going to go down as seizure boy forever. And his real doctor, actual like primary doctor, thinks that unlike the airplane paramedics, he thinks it was just a seizure since he didn't go incontinent. And I'm like, you know, even if they find out that it was just a seizure, you're going to be seizure boy forever. And um, we don't always get along at work because we both prefer, you know, like working alone and we're both easily annoyed, but easily like, easy to forgive. Um, so we found that it works a lot better when we just pretend that we're joking when we say we hate each other. Cause then it's funny, <laughs> even though half the time we're not. Um, uh, but anyways, it, that doesn't work so, for us anymore in the air force. We're we've, <laughs> yeah, we, we have sensitivity trait. Oh my God. Okay. So completely uh, unrelated to my job, completely unrelated to my job or, or anyone that I work with or anyone that I have worked with or any, anyone that I might work with in the future in, in relation to my job. Um, can we get more of this and less of this? Because holy shit, man. Uh, I'm so tired of the flaming vaginas and uh, the, 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 bent, <laughs> the bent dicks. And can we just like all grow up and put our big girl panties on and fucking face the world the way it's supposed to be? Because if I if I get one more person crying about the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, I might just shit myself and smear their nose in it like a bad puppy. Like I'm so fucking tired of that shit. Um, so so back to you, Crunchy. How are you doing today? No. <laughs> Try to offend me, I dare you. No, I, that, um, was, that wasn't aimed towards you at all. <laughs> okay, I figured. <laughs> um, but like, so. We have the work days. All the calls we get, I have to go on. So some days I don't get breaks at all. Some days I don't get them until like an hour before the shift ends. And so I'm just like driving everywhere. And then one day I get to one like nursing home and the doors aren't locked, which is kind of rare for a nursing home, but it was in a shitty area. So whatever. And I walk in and it's just deserted. There's nobody there. So I just like kind of start exploring the hallways and I don't see anyone. And eventually I finally see some lady who's like my height, which for everyone who doesn't know is about the average height of a fourth grader. Um, and she's, she's, she's thicker, but she's not like 
obese like a blob, like I see a lot <laughs> nowadays. But um, so, but she's also like short, so she has like kind of the weird proportions, kind of like half midget. Um, so it looks like somebody put like a pillow in her pants, like it stuck outwards and sideways. <laughs> and um, so I'm like, okay, so where's room 33? And she's like, oh, I'll take you there. Just let me clock out first. I'm on break. And she goes and she clocks out and she comes back and she's like, I have to take you there because it's locked because this is in a different area. We have like two separate areas. And she's throwing her hands around and she's trying to walk fast. So she's like skip hopping. She's like, I have to take you there. I have to take you there. And then I'm like, I feel like this hallway should be made out of yellow bricks because I feel like I'm following a munchkin right now. (laughs) Something. Oh my gosh. Oh, um. God, I want somebody to animate that. Yes. Just take the recording of Crunchy Story just now and animate that. Somebody uh. please do it. <laughs> um well, yeah, I'm sure there's some some Diamond Club people that could uh that could make that happen. Um <laughs> holy shit. So uh, <laughs> uh, we were in Toyota dealership tonight and there was someone who could have been that person's like sister. You know, the, it was one of those things where they were sitting in a chair and they filled the chair. Oh, this is like the librarian that we had in yes. our hometown. Yes, yeah, like her for, body had cracked. She corners. sat. In the, yeah, she <laughs> she she sat in the chair so much of her career that it, her body actually conformed to the chair, so she'd get up and walk around, and it still looked like the inside of the chair on her, <laughs> her body <ass> had corners. <laughs> God. <laughs> and the bad part was she wasn't the sweet librarian. So, you know, the the sweet librarian, I don't even remember like any of her flaws because she was just the nicest person ever. But oh, Karen, yeah, Karen was amazing. Um, uh, the other one though, I, 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 she was so she was like she was, she was that librarian that was like, yeah, it's a book, you read it, and then, you <laughs> read, and yeah. then you return it, and if you don't, you pay for it. That's how it works. <laughs> You're like, uh, I just like I wanted to know where the encyclopedias were. You know? Like, <laughs> like I was hoping I was hoping to find the bathroom. Can you tell me what the bathroom is? Yeah, it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> um shit. So uh so Crunchy, you've got some major life changes here recently. Like a new apartment. I moved. Yeah, a new apartment. I I don't know what you're talking about, but I I know you you moved into a new apartment. I did. It's actually, I don't live in Austin anymore. I live in Pflugerville, but it's basically the same thing to anyone that doesn't live in Austin. Um, Is there any cultural difference between Pflugerville and Austin? If that is its real name. (laughs) (laughs) If it's its real name. Um, There are a lot more black people but i mean it's okay i like pflugerville a lot first of all the name's really german so it's like bringing me back to my roots right because i come from super german ohio town (laughs) and um but like now where the hell is that place that's what i want to (laughs) know ohio (laughs) i don't know i lived in indiana we didn't have indiana bill uh (laughs) Well, maybe we did. There's a lot of cities in Indiana I never fucking visited. Yeah, that's true. That's that's probably it. And that was like a go common ahead. thing. Like, can't we be like, hey, uh, mom and I are going to go to blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we're going to go do uh, such and such and blah, blah. You want to come? I'm like, is is that even in the state? Like, where the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like, oh, dude, it's like 30 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's on the other side of the railroad tracks, dude. Like. I don't. Know. I don't know. I came from Indiana, from California out to back to Indiana. Didn't understand shit. That reminds me. The other side of the tracks. You remember we had Cabbage Town. I never thought of that as a racist thing growing up. I, Do you remember that? Place? No. The like, fuck like, is like this? Where the Catholic Church is like yeah. That part of town is called Cabbage Town. Ask anyone that lives in Oxford, and they will tell you that that's Cabbage Town. Why? Because that's where the Germans settled. I don't know. I, I didn't know there were I, Germans in Oxford, <laughs> other than first, the, other than the Sturgeons, <laughs> and they were my people. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't, like, I, I don't I, get it. I came from an area where I was the minority, went to Indiana, and I, I was just like, why am I still the minority? Just because of my last name. This is weird. <laughs> and now I found out there's Germans I didn't even know were there. Holy shit. Oh, man. Now I feel yeah. like I missed out. We should have had, like, Oktoberfest down there and shit, man. Right? I hate Oktoberfest. <laughs> I hate it. See, All I, right. I All like, right. I'm a fan of Oktoberfest, except for the actual Oktoberfest in Munich. That's a fucking shit show. <laughs> like, my problem with it is, like, there's a lot of people from out of town that are drinking and don't know the roads, and they run my car over and put me in the hospital for a month and kind of make me gimpy forever. So, like, it turns out that apparently every year around October first time, I get super paranoid and I don't want to leave the house, and that's why I hate it. And now that I have to drive for work, I get really paranoid if I have to work and drive everywhere that day. Yeah. Wow. wow. That, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah. You, you might have some issues there. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> but, okay, so I moved in this apartment. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Speaking Travis? of the other side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most scatterbrained episode ever. We just keep oh. jumping that is my brain. Well, <laughs> you'll get used to it really fast. <laughs> that's that's actually the topic of discussion this evening. Welcome to Crunchy. I mean, uh, Squirrel. I mean, what? Oh, hey, back. Hey, Crunchy. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, did you know? K- hey, Kent. Did you know Crunchy was on tonight? This is amazing. <laughs> it's so great because that way you have to pay more attention to me when you try to figure out what I'm talking about. Oh, now you're an attention. Is that whore, thing we huh? were talking about twenty minutes ago, or is it the thing we were talking about two minutes ago? You never know. So now you're an attention <laughs> whore, like I. We're just learning everything tonight. <laughs> so you moved to Fungerville in a new apartment. I did. <laughs> and <laughs> Travis and Ashley really wanted me to have an apartment warming party. I don't know why, because I don't own things. Like, I, I just got a couch for the first time in, like, years. So I'm finally not a hobo. Um, so we didn't have... It was kind of a little... Um, tame to be honest like we just played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on PlayStation um, but they actually all brought me stuff which surprised me because like I went to Waffle Officus's apartment warming thingy oh, waffle and I didn't get him anything and he brought me some of his beer but like he said it was going to be a, a cow naming party because his apartments overlooked a field of cows <laughs> and we got there and there were totally zero cows <laughs> we were a rip off um, Son of a bitch. I but I mean, the apartments are nice. The only problem is that my neighbors all suck dick. Um, uh, like, is, is that a reference to the gay population in the area, or yeah, no, or no. like? I'm just, I'm just asking. I mean, because you already, you already stated that you live amongst a bunch of black people, so I'm just, I'm just wondering. Did you just imply that all black people are gay? No, no. I was just saying you <laughs> might, you might be making comments on the the socio. Sociology of the area. Gunther, this is like a Richard Gunther episode. Like we have to offend absolutely everyone. <laughs> this episode. Uh, and, and, and just like when Richard's on, I didn't even mean to make any offense at all. Like it was. <laughs> <laughs> was that a gay joke? You already said everyone was black, so obviously that was gay. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, apparently. Shit happening right now <laughs> oh we are off the rails now. uh there's rails what, oh, what? God. <laughs> hey speaking of speaking of waffle off he is in the chat oh look at that now What's up, dude? He, he comes in he the heard- chat just about the same time we're implying that all dick suckers are gay so <laughs> like i'm not i'm not oh. putting any connections together but it, it's it's there if you want to make it like <laughs> oh man yeah, uh, and, draw your and, own. And, and apparently, folks. Stacy's gay as well. She's in the chat as well. Apparently, she's gay <laughs> as well. Because uh... <laughs> I feel like that probably wasn't what she meant. <laughs> Good call, though. <laughs> oh dear God! So, how's your new apartment? <laughs> I hate my neighbors. I've told a lot of people about my downstairs one, which is the one I have the biggest problem with, because he hangs out outside of the apartments all day. Mm-hmm. Like, apparently, he even talked to Ashley and them as they were coming into my apartment. Hmm. And the one day... So he's friendly. Okay. <laughs> too friendly. And I didn't like him talking to me because nobody likes their upstairs neighbors. And But he kept talking to me anyways to tell me that he lived right below me. 
And then the one day I wake up and there's a bunch of really loud sex coming from below me and the apartment starts like moving, like they're up against a wall or something. So I know. Right. So now I just like fuck on the floor just so that hopefully they can hear like every thrust. That's my solution. (laughs) Oh man. Um, (laughs) Yeah, remind me not to move into that apartment complex because I don't want to – every no, the thing is, contest. The thing is, um, I snatched up – like the only reason I moved was because the deal was too good to pass up because normally the apartments are at like at least $950, but the one I was going for was 830 and I clearly moved into the $800 hallway. <laughs> The guy across from me is like super gangsta. And for a while, I swore to God he was like a pimp and he just had hookers coming in and out like constantly. But then he just has like his friends like stand outside of his door, like eating noodles all the time. Like I call them the noodlers. The noodlers. So mm-hmm. so so what you're saying is that all poor people are black gay dick suckers. Is that what I'm getting from this? That's what a noodler is. I Th- that's that's a noodler. Okay, so a noodler is a a poor black gay dick sucker. Well, I think they were ramen noodles, so that's probably a, a lot of times that's an indication of poor, the, unless you as, really as, as like. Poodle, as Poodle Puncher said, uh, they, they have loud sex. They have to have loud sex in order to be a a, a noodler. Ah, uh, yes, right. Um, like, I hope somebody's writing this down because I'm gonna forget the definition. um i I just want to take a take a quick moment to remind everybody that showbot is active so if you have a decent title for the show just hit uh bang s which is uh uh, uh, yeah there you go right there as poodle punch just did in chat room um so make sure that that happens that's one of the funnest part of parts of having a live audience is being able to help name the show so plus it takes a little little uh pressure off me because because this show is so pressure sensitive <laughs> um, no it's just you you're uh, pressure sensitive. so so now that now that we've uh, decided that we uh, none of us should ever be sociology majors uh <laughs> kent what the hell is delix <laughs> Dal- you have to read that properly it's dalex you know what ms i just i have to give you shit just because you said you don't watch doctor who so people can't give you shit for not knowing stuff the daleks are from doctor who and you fucked it up. Just like everything else you do. M- mission accomplished. Like, <laughs> I just proved my point. <laughs> oh, man. So the, the reason I put that in the show notes, uh, our new podcast, mine and Sassiana's new podcast, has officially begun. Mm. Uh, mm. Started recording. The recording phase. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Uh, I think I mentioned last time, yep. we're not going to release until we've got one season worth done. Um, so it'll probably be uh, a month or two before it actually shows itself in the in the current timeline. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly that. Uh, but no, the reason I, I specifically put Daleks in there is the most recent one that we watched was the first appearance of the Dalek. It was like a super cool thing, and especially when they said exterminate for the first time, exterminate. It's like, oh fuck yeah, that was just a super cool moment. But yeah, that was by far the geekiest thing. Hmm. I just, I quit watching Doctor Who after like the fourth episode of this last season. The show, <laughs> the episode where they introduced the sonic sunglasses and they kept making the Doctor break the fourth wall. I'm like, I'm done. I tried <laughs> giving Moffat a chance and I can't. I can't. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not a big fan of, of the 12th Doctor. Anyway. Uh, he was cool until they turned him from sarcasm into like old grandpa type. He just like did a 180 after like the first three episodes. Mm. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, you 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 don't say. That's the thing. This episode. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's probably a good title. But I digress. <laughs> uh, so, what is this about a murder mystery, like? We we know you live in a, in a poor area with with uh, various social peoples. 
Like, was this like a real life thing? Black people and gay people. It's fucking ridiculous. Ugh, I hate Are those it. separate? Because, I mean, I feel like maybe we need to differentiate if they're actually separate, not just a, a combined, uh, you know. Oh. Like, oh, yeah. They're both. I forgot. Oh. See? And have loud sex. And uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> derail. And. <laughs> So this murder mystery thing, Squirrel. was this a real murder mystery or was this like a uh, like a show sort of thing? It was like a show. That's what we have like a Christmas party every year at work. Um, and it's a family run company. So they like to pretend the eight employees that they hired are all family too. <laughs> it drives me insane. Because like last year, they're like, hey, <laughs> hey, have you met um, Mindy's sister, Lisa? And she's like, um, it's Shelly. Not Lisa. I'm like, yep, we're family, right? We don't even know each other's names. But anyways, so they set up these Christmas parties, and they got like some murder mystery thing at the residence in, and they kept going. So you really need, <laughs> Stacy. So she's like, so you really need to make sure that you bring somebody this year. And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen because <laughs> I had to work at I had to work afterwards, and. Like, I would invite people, but I feel like I'd be ditching them afterwards. And my coworker is even like, well, I mean, you're bringing them to this show. Like, like, but if, if it were with other people, it would be different. But I'm not going to bring friends to a thing where I'm like, okay, now everyone else here is really religious. You're not allowed to cuss or say anything you would normally say ever and will be good. And, um... So I'm already thinking that. So I'm there alone. And the actors in this thing were like super loud and like obnoxious kind of like, but like in like a dramatic, like Jim Carrey kind of way, I guess. And um, so there were like parts of it, like there was one part where they were trying to get the person that they pulled out the audience to, uh, you know, talk or think faster. And they're like, God damn it, Lucy. And I like gasp and I like held my breath. And then everybody at that table with that family like looks up and they're like, you can't say that. You shouldn't say that. Don't say that. And they did that every single time the actors cussed. And they're like, okay, we're going to kick you out of here. Oh my gosh. Um, but they like personalized it too. Like there were parts when they would have like pictures from people's, like some of the employees, like Facebooks, like printed out and like, hung on their shirt underneath their jacket. And that's when I'm like, I am so glad every time I see one of them on Facebook, on like the suggested friends, I block them right away. <laughs> and it's because of stuff like that. They don't need to know that my hair is a mohawk because they would not like that. <laughs> Everybody just thinks it's like a trendy little pixie cut right now, which is fine. Um, and they had like, that. They, they pulled a bunch of people up to make them do like obnoxious stuff. Like, I'm like, I was terrified of getting my name called because they made one guy sing really loud and then they made one guy twerk in front of everyone hell no but i got lucky i had I, nothing I, I could just see an entire murder mystery dinner and everyone in there, in there is just chanting crunchy crunchy, crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> not that that ever happens anyway <laughs> ever uh, that'd be amazing um so you know I've been having these problems with this damn computer. So uh, uh, I downloaded uh, 3D Mark and PC Mark last night, and started crunching away at it. Uh, not no pun intended. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so the problem I, I was I was having the issue, and I could get it to repeat and repeat, and it, it, like every time I wanted to make the computer just die and do the little graphic glitch thing, I could get it to do it. I throw these two on there. They're supposed to be able to tell me how it performs and maybe, you know, give me some clues as to where it's glitching. Hasn't happened uh, since. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's kind of like when the exterminator shows up, the rat just leaves. <laughs> hey, hey, whatever works, man. <laughs> That's fine. As long as the gremlins leave, <laughs> I don't care how. Right. Yeah. So that, oh. that's pretty much where that was at. Uh, I was just because I was I was in the uh, the post night attack uh, hangout and we were all just shooting the shit and, and talking and stuff like that and I couldn't get it to fail again like it failed the first time that I installed the programs and it wouldn't do it again I was, you're kidding me 
So bottom line, uh, I have absolutely no idea why the hell the computer is glitching. It's running perfectly now, and it's time for this. Now, Kent, I see what you did there. You tried. What? <laughs> you tried, but your laziness came through, and your delay, and you caught one on the front page. Because I saw it I on the front page. Yes, I did. Natalie <laughs> Panek, let's clean up the space junk orbiting Earth. Yeah, see, I, I think her last name is actually pronounced Panic because she has a website called panicroom.com, I think. Because that makes more sense than Panek Room. I don't know. Uh, just my deduction. Uh, but, but yeah, so let's, let's, cl let's clean up the space junk orbiting Earth. So she's talking about the, I think we're close to 7,000 satellites that we as humans have put into space. And only about maybe a thousand of those actually work. Hmm. So the rest of them are just kind of hanging out, orbiting the planet. Not to mention there's all kinds of like nuts and bolts and little panels and pieces of just crap. Right. Floating around in space. And uh, not only is it kind of crowding the place up and just, you know, taking up space, but it also, it's also a danger to any spacecraft that go up there to, to include the satellites that are orbiting right now. Uh, I mean, all it takes is one piece of space junk to hit a satellite and, well, it's not going to work. Anymore. And they got and the, she was, she's got the, the coolest graphic on here, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the, the interesting thing that a lot of people don't think about is that our satellites are at, at various altitudes, like mm -hmm. anywhere from like 10 miles above the Earth to 100 miles above the Earth. So there's quite a bit of you know, depth in the, the orbits, I guess. Uh, but there's space junk in that entire like belt. There's just junk. It's becoming a problem. Yep. And she was just yep. talking about, you know, ways to uh, to fix that. You take take care of the junk that's already there, and also prevent more junk being being put up there. It's it's very similar to uh, like environmentalists on Earth, like the way that we talk about uh, not polluting anymore, cleaning up the pollution that we already have here. Mm -hmm. And she was putting it in those same terms, space junk. And I think today it's not necessarily that big of a problem but in the next 50 years next 100 years like this is going to be a, a major thing well i mean it's um, only it's only been what since the late 50s that we've been actually putting things in orbit anyway 1957 i think is when sputnik went. so so you're looking at 60 years and we've already put so much up there that they're having to reroute and i don't know if i saw this in that one or maybe another one that they're having to reroute space missions because essentially clouds of debris are yeah. are threatening missions going out into orbit, going to the to you know Mars and the Moon, and everything else, and it's not like necessarily a critical thing now; it's an inconvenience. But in just mm -hmm. sixty years, we've done that. Yeah, you know? and it's just going to get more and more because we're exponentially putting more things. Exactly. Space, the so. more stuff we put up yeah. there, the more stuff crashes into other stuff, and. Voila yep. problems. Yeah, all of our GPSs and, and communications and yep. just everything is just going to go offline. So, so, Crunchy, how pissed off would you be if your cell phone goes down because uh, some space junk crashed into a satellite and takes out communications for all of Texas? So I would assume the satellite destruction uh, wipes out Internet as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. I'd be fucking pissed. <laughs> Like, without a cell phone, like, I communicate with half the people I know for Facebook Messenger instead of a phone anyways. Internet goes down, I'm a lot more upset than the phone. <laughs> right, yeah. To, to me, most of the time, they're one and the same. Most of my internet consumption is through my phone. Uh, fair enough. Um, I I just consume internet. I don't care where it's from. I'm, I just, <laughs> yeah. Like, if internet Pretty had calories, I would be the the biggest dude ever 
because I, <laughs> like, I'm just, I, don't, I don't even care. It's just it's there. I'm taking it all. Um, so, so, go ahead, Kent. You look like you was about to say something. You look like it, and I think you heard you say something and start it, and then you stopped it, <laughs> and now you're just looking at it really awkwardly into the camera. Can't see something, man. I'm getting a little freaked out right now. Like it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird just watching you laugh and stare at the camera with the thought in your mind that you don't want to express. What's going on, man? Why can't you just say it, dude? Just talk. Quincy, did you watch TED Talk this week? I did not. Oh. <laughs> I was going to see how far you went. <laughs> no, I was just going to prompt you. So Sally Cohn, let's try emotional correctness. What was that about? Ha, it's not ha. Sally Cohn. It's Sally Cohn. Cohn. <laughs> um. Uh, essentially she's a political pundit she's a lesbian liberal um on fox news well at least she was at the time and essentially it's no matter how your views are different just don't be a dick and everybody's everybody works out I mean, that's essentially what it comes down to is even if you have different political opinions or different religious opinions, whatever else, just don't be a dick. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. I mean, I, I it's only like a seven-minute one because I was lazy, too, and I watched it on the shitter before the show. So, um, <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's it's decent. And she's actually got more than one TED Talk. She's got a, uh, several TED Talks, and, and I've watched a few of them. They're not too bad. I right. uh, I completely agree because I know there are like religious people that pretend you can't be a good person without believing in God because apparently that's where morals come from. Because that's a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I also can't help but notice that prior to actually going live, you were talking about how she said she didn't care if you called her a dyke and you were going to call her a dyke. And now that the show comes on, you've already been accused of being homophobic. You switched to <laughs> a lesbian? Uh well, I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> we we did say that we're going to offend everybody. Well, when so. we when we talked before the show, uh, I had just watched. It, I like, mean, I don't think lesbians count as dick suckers. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it works that way. Right, so it just means you don't have any lesbians living in your apartment building. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, that's I guess that makes sense with the definition. Because they're all what is it? Noodlers? They're all noodlers. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um Oh man, this is uh I can't wait to hear some feedback on this episode. So <clears throat> actually I don't know if I want the feedback or not. I always, I always get want that feedback. baby away from here. The worst that's gonna happen is they're gonna tell us we suck as bad as we do. Um not like oh well, Anyway, hey, dude, if if, uh, if I'm not living in Crunchy's building and I like uh, collecting random gamer gear and shit, where might I go for something like that? Dude, like, there's the this street? really cool website. Like, there's this really cool website called geekandgamergear.com. Yeah. It's geek, the letter N, gamergear.com. Dude, I, I went to this website because. Did you see the the Guardians of the Galaxy two trailer that just came out? Uh, I I did. I saw it at the theater. Oh my god! Well, no, this is pro this is probably a brand new one. I mean, it just was released to the internet like two or three uh, days ago. So that means I'll see it next Wednesday. Probably, but dude, this movie looks absolutely amazing. I can't wait for it. And one of the coolest things about the trailer is they have Baby Groot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, it's so adorable and so funny, and I cannot wait to see this movie. It got me excited for merchandise. I want some Baby Groot merchandise. He gets excited. So I, went, I went to geekandgamergear.com uh -huh. to see the off chance that maybe they had something. Yeah. They absolutely do. They have a Baby Groot plushie, and it's only $11. You're lying. No, I swear you're, to you. You're I lying. Can see it. That looks real. But you know what? You know what's even cooler though. If if I was to order this yeah. from geekandgamergear.com, uh -huh. use a promo code uh -huh, Ritual uh -huh. Misery yeah. at checkout. I could get it for under ten bucks. Yeah, ten, under ten bucks. Under ten dollars, dude, because you get ten percent off your entire first order. So what at, if I bought like an army of these little baby groots? If you if you bought. 300 of these damn things 
you're going to get 30 bucks off your entire order. That's 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 pretty good. Yeah, it is. That's but, geekandgamergear.com. But if they're eleven dollars each and about three hundred of them, I'd actually get like three hundred dollars off my order. It's an even better deal. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Math. Apparently you don't either. Math hurts. <laughs> Math it's, hurts. It's significant savings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um so with all that being said, man, there's there's something that we have just never done. We've always promised to do it. We've just never never done it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do it because because awesome. We have a Patreon page. Oh yeah, we have this Patreon page right here with two really ugly dudes. Like who are these ugly dudes on there, man? We got to get them motherfuckers off. Well, yeah, we need to find like, new ugly dudes for our webpage. <laughs> we need to find some ugly dudes that are a couple years older than that. Yeah, yeah, um, and and a couple <laughs> years chubbier than that too. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so we have promised for a while now that we would call out our patrons and thank them individually. And uh, tonight, it, we are finally going to be make good on that promise. So, uh, I'm going to name them off, and if you guys know something about them, uh, you can kick out a little factoid or a little story or uh, whatever you'd like, and we will go down the list of our patrons. And this is in no particular order, mostly because I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't sort right because web pages are hard too. <laughs> um, so, Wabbit Magic. No, nothing about Wabbit, huh? Oh, oh, I thought you were talking to Chat Realm. You're actually talking to us? <laughs> Dude, Wabbit Magic is cool as hell. You were talking about the post-Night Attack hangouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he shows up in those. Yeah. He's a uh, pretty cool dude. Oh, he's, he's, he's still here. Yeah, he's actually in the chat room. Um, so thank <laughs> you, Wabbit, for, uh, for helping us out that way. <laughs> Um, and then Cabo, our friend Cabo, our, our semi-frequent guest and hopefully companion on this next South by Southwest. Um, oh, dude, that would be so awesome yeah. if he came there. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So Cabo, thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for, uh, for helping us out. Uh, Kent, would you like to say a word or two about Dark Redeemer? Um, he, well, he's never in chat. He <laughs> never watches our show. No. Doesn't contribute at no, all. No, I, I don't even know how he's heard of us. Like it's, <laughs> like, he, he must have done this by accident. No, the the complete opposite of everything I just said. <laughs> uh, he, yeah. Oh, oh. Speaking of which, did did you get your shirt? He, uh, he, I I thought he did. He should have gotten a shirt. I thought he did. But anyhow, anyhow, he's he's super awesome. He's been watching us for quite a while and contributing. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, uh, I, I would like to say that uh, yeah. he's he's also uh, a good contributor to Diamond Club in general. The behind the scenes stuff that he and I and Jackie and uh, Sergeant Muffin and, and others are are doing, um, really uh, really really helpful there too. Yeah. So definitely. so the next one would be Movie Man Lucas. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think um, I think I know him in real life. Really. <laughs> like you should probably probably poke him in the in the in the eye or something. Yeah, I might I might go wake him up. Yep. Uh, he, he's my co-host on the dormant podcast film zone. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to be reviving that thing, and um, yeah, it's kind of uh, stalled out again. So we're hopefully in the near future we'll be bringing film zone. Cr Crunchy knows all about uh, dormant podcast, doesn't she? <laughs> hey. <laughs> You know what? I'm busy. <laughs> Avoiding neighbors and shit. <laughs> you know, I... I had to take a couple scoops of pre-workout to stay awake for this. 
because I had to stay over for work because we were busy, and then I had to take Seizure Boy home, and then I had to <laughs> go get my hair cut, but they called, and they said that they had a scheduling conflict, and I had to come in a half hour early, but then she was behind, so then I didn't get in until my original time. I just had to wake up sooner, and I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really tired, guys. <laughs> I don't have enough time to sleep. Um, and next would be MTJ. Uh, he hosts. Uh, what is it about the weather? Or what's the? Wow, oh, damn it! What's the name? I, I always fuck up the exact names. He has ho- weather podcast. Yeah, he he hosts a weather podcast. It's really awesome. He discusses just the rain, most random issues about weather, and we really appreciate uh, really appreciate MTJ as well. Uh, Caspian Reborn. This is a, a an individual that um, started following our show in Korea, and thus far is the, our biggest patron. And um, yeah, really, really appreciate that. That's awesome. He's one of the yeah, one yeah. of the one of the early ones and one of the big ones. Yeah, thanks, man. Much appreciated. Uh, Poodle Puncher. Who the fuck is Poodle Puncher? Like, I've never heard that before. It's another one of those guys that I don't. I don't know. If he even watches the show, uh, uh, no, Poodle Puncher. I think he's in chat every single time Poodle, we get on chat. According to Poodle Puncher, according to Poodle Puncher, Poodle Puncher is a dick. <laughs> so I'm not. I'm not saying that. I mean, that sounds pretty legit, but I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not declaring that final. But I, that, <laughs> that seems like a pretty good, um, pretty good source right there. So yeah, no, Poodle Puncher. Thanks, man. You, you're cool. You are a fucking cool dude. Oh no shit, that's legit. Thanks a lot. Um, Sean, Sean is another big contributor. He's actually the biggest per episode contributor at ten dollars, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, and that's like, oh my god, yeah. really, really fucking yeah, sweet. That allows us to do so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another dude we know in real life, and man, what. Enthusiasm out the ears, and finally oh, a, another one uh, by the name of Dan. Dan has been on board since September, and super appreciated. So Dan, uh, keep doing the awesome shit you are doing every day for Diamond Club. Yep, thanks, buddy. And that's uh, that's our patron rundown for the first of the month, and hopefully we get a couple more come next month. That'd be the that'd be that's the dream, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, keep growing the ritual misery community. That's patreon.com slash ritual misery. All right. Okay, so uh to wrap up some more business here. Um well as as soon as it fucking gets past the stupid bullshit ad, there we go. <laughs> hey, hey Crunchy, what's this uh Spotify thing that you that you put in the show notes here? This, uh, Ah, so Spotify is doing a new ad a thing. They're putting walls. up billboards that, uh, like, straight up say, like, the embarrassing things that it's people do. It's where boundaries cease to exist. Um, but they're, like, putting it on display, and it's even, like, localized. Cars under your control. Like, it'll be like, oh, that person in L.A. did this and put the sign up in L.A. Is an open invitation. Um, and it'll say this things like, dear person who played sorry 42 times on Valentine's Day, what did you do? And it's a whole bunch of, like, dirty laundry like that. Um, let see if I can find another good one. Like, do you, do you guys think that's okay? No, what? Why? Like, what is? what are they getting out of it? What is this? Dear person at, in L.A. who listened to the Forever Alone playlist for four hours on Valentine's Day, are you okay? That's, that's kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a dick move. Like, I don't, I don't get that. I, I don't understand why they would even do that. Like, where's the money in that? I, That's, yeah. Would that help you bring people to use the app? Cause I feel like people would be like, uh, yeah, if I use that app, it's going to be like, I could have some potentially embarrassing thing hanging up about me. Like that would not tempt me to use the app at all. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, I- exactly. That's that's exactly the opposite effect. I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do, um, Soundhound or something. I'm not gonna do Spotify. Not if you're gonna do that shit to me. Exactly. Right? I just wanted to see if I was alone on that front. 
No, and and you know the weird thing, I clicked the link in the show notes that you put in there, and I couldn't get to the article after like five clicks, so I gave up because things kept, I kept getting that you you were talking about ads, and in fact, I thought you were trolling us. You could put Spotify ads, and then this link when it came up because what is this from? This is the Daily Mirror, right? The, the yeah. yeah, website, the mirror so, mirror.co.uk. Yeah, so I thought this was like some kind of a troll thing that you were doing on us to get us to bring up a site that just pops up a bunch of crap. And I was like, what is this? So I just closed it. Well, it, it, <laughs> it actually played on the stream for quite a while because I couldn't figure out how to get rid of the of the autoplay bullshit. Like, it was just there. Yes. That was another thing. It autoplayed for me. And you know how normally at the, at the top of your browser, in the tab, you can turn off the sound mm -hmm. for that window? It wouldn't allow me to turn off the sound from there. I had to physically mute my computer to make it stop. Yeah, I, I, I went back through. I, I had to go, to go to the settings and mute the app and uh, mute Chrome, open it back up, and then... <laughs> so, so fuck this site. Yeah, um, no, Daily Mirror, or what is it? Mirror.co.uk. Yeah. Uh, so fix so, your shit. So f fuck them. And, <laughs> and fuck Spotify. I mean, this... That's some weird, <laughs> creepy shit. Like, uh, uh, this whole thing about everybody knows what you do is fine. It's fine. So, so we, so it's fine. But you start aggregating that and making stories out of it, it's it's just fucking weird. Like, it's weird. Right? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... Thank you. And and fuck the mirror, okay? Not actually your mirror. The, the mirror, the, the the website. Not not a, not an actual mirror. That, that, that's weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if that's what you're into. Like, like whatever, you know? Like, uh, just, oh, just move into Crunchy's yeah. building. And go to town. Oh man! <laughs> with the noodlers, with, become a with, noodler. With the noodlers, because move uh, to Flugerville. Become a Flugerville noodler. <laughs> That's the new hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> the Flugerville. I'm, I'm Fluger, going to is, assume that noodler starts with the P too. Well, yeah. Just because like it's pneumonia like, and stuff, yeah, but it's like, that's still a thing. Yeah, P N U E or P N E U or whatever it is. Like it's yeah. that. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> hey, can't we make these now? Sell those in our store. We we got another project going on, dude. We got something we got to tell people about. Oh yes, absolutely. I know we've been talking this thing to death, but we still need some some volunteers and some participation this new year's on diamondclub.tv for what is it amos 27 hours straight i think 27 hours yeah seven hours straight on diamondclub.tv we are going to have a streamathon so there's going to be entertainment uh there is going to be opportunity to raise money for a really good cause uh there's going to be uh, the the satisfaction of of participating in something there's going to be the friendship among chat realm and all the diamond clubbers and frog panthers that are coming out to this thing uh there is so much cool stuff that's going to be happening on new year's eve I, I just can't wait i'm so excited about it and we would love all of you to to be participants in this if you go to what is it yellow 420.com slash marathon 2017 yep yep yes Yellow420.com slash marathon2017. There's some info. I'm going to be updating that soon with some exciting updates. Uh, there's also a link to the sign up in there. Uh, go ahead and sign up. Even if you think that there's a good chance that you'll be able to participate, go ahead and sign up anyway. I'm going to be sending out emails. Looks probably like this weekend, I'm going to send out the first batch of emails to yep. the volunteers uh, so we can start getting some scheduling going. And uh, uh, so we do things. We do have we do have some details, a few details we can we can pass out. Um, first of all, we do have a poster, a rare poster from uh, from Scott Johnson. It's going to be signed by Scott Johnson, Brian Ibbett, Tom Merritt, Justin R. Young, and Brian and Bonnie Brushwood. It's going to be signed by all of them, and the top donator to the cause of extralife.org will be awarded that. 
So that's going out to whoever donates the most. That that way it's open, honest, and just easy to handle. Um, we'll have donations. We'll be, we'll start taking donations this weekend, and we are looking toward having a one hour um, game of the contender with one of the creators, John Teasdale. Yep. Yep. So he's gonna play with some fans. If uh, if you're interested in that, email us podcast at ritualmisery dot com, and we'll get you on that list to be to actually play with the with the creator, well, one of the creators of the contender card game. And we are uh, we are looking to have possibly Tom Merritt, Bonnie and Brian Brushwood, Brian Ibbett, uh, Scott Johnson is not available, so he's already bowed out. Um, and then tons of actual diamond clubbers putting things on. Sometimes some new streamers, some longtime streamers, and we're looking to to have fun and do it all, um, and interact with the chat room the entire time. So no matter, no matter where you are in the world, you will not spend New Year's Eve alone, and raise yep. some raise about a. Th- I'm hoping for a thousand dollars, raising about a thousand dollars for a good cause, the children, children children's hospital, in the process. Oh, and um, just to bribe you guys a little bit more, if all of that exciting stuff wasn't enough, you are going to get an exclusive swag pack. Uh, I'm not going to reveal what all is going to be in it yet. Because you don't um, know. Seems like, seems like every, well, <laughs> it seems like every time we talk about it, something new is being added or uh, changed to be something better. Yeah. So we're going to leave that a secret for now, but it's, it's bullshit, and you're going to want this. So, yeah, get signed up. So sign up and take part. And if nothing else, if you if 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 you got nothing, anything else, just donate, and we'll have those links up very shortly, and they'll be uh, in the chat room and everything else. So, yep, yep. Um, hey man, uh, we have a little bit of unfinished business, but first, Crunchy, can you tell us where people can find more of your antics and uh, social commentary? <laughs> yes, I am on Twitter at Crunchy eighty nine. Crunchy is spelled with a K. And then as, I as also it would have those sites, right? What? As it would be for a social commentator like you. Yeah, of course. Spelled with a K. <laughs> and, and also spelled with a K is crunch, <laughs> crunchfiles.weebly.com. Uh, the last video I made, I actually really like. Um, so go check that shit out. Um, all right. Right on. And uh, you have also signed up to be one of our streamers on New Year's Eve. So if yeah. nothing else, come check her hour out whenever whenever we figure it out, we get the schedule up, uh, which should be sh- soon, right? Like we Yeah, we're going to start scheduling probably this weekend. Probably we're this going weekend to start and hopefully have something permanent or have something actually scheduled two weeks prior to the actual event. That's, yep. that's the target. We're trying, that. to, we're trying to get all this knocked out well in advance. So we're not doing... Because, you know, things are going to happen last minute. Yeah. Somebody's going to duck out or want to swap or something like that. We want to take care of those, like, emergency things, again, not this, like, initial planning a week out. <laughs> yeah. Stacy, um, sign up. You can stream with me. Definitely. Uh, a lot of us don't know what the hell we're going to do. So, <laughs> just, yes, just we are going to have some brainstorming sessions. Yep. We're going to do some Google Hangouts. Uh, so, even if, if you want to do it and you don't know exactly what it is, want to do or what you can do sign up anyway and we will help you figure it out and if you've always thought hey it'd be really cool to be on diamondclub.tv this might be a good chance to um to get your foot in the door so yeah definitely um all that being said we do have some crunchy libs for the evening we do we do in Yay. in honor, th- th- tonight's is in honor of Crunchy getting her uh, her apartment, her new place, and and having welcoming parties, and and uh, you know really just learning how to love her new apartment. And of course, anytime you have a new apartment, you're gonna have a sleepover. So of course, um, this is uh this is yeah this is the invitation for such event. Kent, are you gonna read it or am I gonna read it? Um, so I, I think I read the last one. You want to read this one? All right. <laughs> okay. So Amos is about to read it. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hold on. For, for the, the three or four people that might not know what we're doing here. <laughs> for the episodes of Ritual Misery, we mine the conversation for words or phrases that, that kind of stick out to us. Either they're funny or they're interesting or whatever. 
could be said by anybody, the, the hosts or the guests or whatever. We plug them into a document that puts them into a Mad Libs style, okay, a stolen Mad Libs story, and then we read it at the end, and this is what this is. So, Amos, take us away. Dear Crunchy, I would like to invite you to, a un- to an uncomfortable sleepover party this Friday night at my candy. I live on the corner of South Pflugerville Street and Seizure Boy Lane. Please arrive every, every fucking time at 33 o'clock. Don't forget <laughs> to bring a gimpy sleeping black people and a soft <laughs> cows to rest your flaming vaginas and bent dicks on. <laughs> we'll have pizza topped with hookers for dinner and we'll watch an edible movie. When it is time for bed, we'll all change into our noodlers and turn out the dormant podcasts. Then we'll tell <laughs> cool ghost stories and talk about all the cute autoplay ads at school. Please RSVP to me by email at I love Jim Carrey at Jim <laughs> Hope you can enjoy your our good party. <laughs> So when you invite people for your sleepover, that's the type of invite you need to have. Okay. Um, I have two <laughs> comments. One, I really want some pizza topped with hookers now. That sounds <laughs> awesome. And two, I have a surprise. I made you guys one too. <laughs> oh, uh, what? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> you said you need to change the bit. I just changed it for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> bit oh, reversal. <sighs> okay. So I got driving tips. <laughs> driving a car can be fun if you follow this amazing advice. When approaching an exterminator on the right, always blow your junk. <laughs> <laughs> Before making your next turn, always stick your body out the window. Every 2,000 miles, have your boat Pokeball inspected and your noodle checked. <laughs> When approaching a school, watch out for racist... Oh, shit. I used that one twice. Watch out for racist noodles. (laughs) I fucked up, guys. I'm sorry. And five, above all, drive correctly. The gremlins you saved may be your own. (laughs) Holy shit. That was amazing. That's a... That's a... That's a... That's a... Double livery for this episode. Holy crap. And See, you I, think you're the only one? I got this shit. I got it. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you, Crunchy. That was so cool and completely unexpected. I don't know if you want to play. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. That was awesome. That was really, really rad. We really appreciate that. <laughs> First of all, it shows that you watch the show, which is just amazing in and of itself. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kent, where can people find more about you if, they would, uh, if they'd if they like to throw you through a Mad Lib? Oh, man. Just go to Twitter and find me at RM underscore Del Noche. That's, that's, that's really it. What if they want to hear your review on Pepsi? Um, well, let's see. You probably won't find that. But if you do give a shit about my beer reviews, which I actually just added one a couple of days ago, uh, go to ratebeer.com, look up username Del Noche. Right on, right on. Uh, you, you, can, you can find me at Ethan Kane on the old Twitter because it's the only social media platform that I have time or concern enough to use. And uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. In fact, if you follow the show next week, you'll find out exactly when Brett the Amtrekker Roundsville is going to be on the show. Well, spoiler alert, we have a new day and time mm. starting next week mm. i think this is going to be a, a a much better time now we've we've got a pretty good following right now in chat room so this is weird for me to say but this is <laughs> a new development over the last couple of weeks where we've got pretty much a full chat room every time uh but this is you know this is i think will be a better time for for everybody we'll get some more people yep uh so it's going to be Thursdays at what is it 7 p.m. Pacific mm. which is 10 p.m. Eastern right so do it, the math figure out your 
time to. Next week might be a little bit early because I do have tickets to go see uh, Star Wars that evening. Not well, not till like midnight show, right? No, no, no. It says seven o'clock. It's eleven o'clock Eastern time. So seven o'clock my time would be six o'clock or eight o'clock Pacific. So we'll, we'll we'll get it all figured out. We'll 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 do the math. Um, but it is moving to Thursday nights in an earlier time slot, so we can have some more interaction because we really love chat room and uh, we want to make sure that they they're not sleeping while we're out here doing our thing. Yep. Yeah, and um, next week's show with Am Trekker is probably going to bring more people too. So uh, look forward to a full chat room next week. That should be a really fun show. The only person so, uh, that's ever fired the Donald. That's that's what I was getting ready to say. He that a little bit of trivia that that not everyone knows surprisingly is that Brett actually fired Donald Trump. He is the only person to ever file, fire Donald Trump. Well, the only the, the only f- person left you. alive like like that we know of. Right. <laughs> right. The, the rest if of If you have to just look it up, go to YouTube and and just type in Amtrekker Donald Trump. Yeah. Or, or sure. Donald Trump fired. We'll bring it up as well. Will it? Certainly will. So we are we we've decided that uh, the end of the year will be the last time that you can buy the still in beta swag that we have on the website. So you have about three weeks left, three or four weeks left to get uh, get your favorite swag, your still in beta shirts, everything else. And you can find all of that at ritualmisery.com slash swag. And if you wouldn't mind, just toss us an iTunes review. Like it's been a while since we had one. So cruise on over by there and just uh, hit the little uh the little one or five stars, five stars, and five is the right answer. It's a, it's, it's what it's uh. and uh, just click on that, and clicky clicky, and then maybe leave a few words. What I really like to read on the on the iTunes reviews, I like to read it when it's five stars, and then it's nothing but bad stuff about the show. Oh so, yes, do that. So let's uh, let's get that going. Go go over over to um, to iTunes, click on the old five star thing, and then just just. Label all the worst things that you can think of about the show. Everything that you can think of that's bad about the show, put it in there, followed by a five-star review, and uh, and we might uh, might read those next week if we can get a few of them in there. Absolutely. Yes, yes, sure. I'll put you on. <laughs> I got you. I was on that show. It fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you totally got to watch it. Go look how bad this show sucks. Do you see that picture? Those guys are so much older and... <laughs> Like <laughs> ten years fatter than what they look like in that picture too. It's ridiculous. Only ten. I'm so happy. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you can find everything that you want to know about our show over at ritualmisery.com. And uh, thank you to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your theme music. It should be popping up right about now. And really, we thank you for listening, for watching, for Kent, for Crunchy, for me. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was super fun. Thank you, Crunchy, for coming back on. And thank you for for completely surprising the shit out of us with the, with the Mad Libs thing. And, I mean, uh, this, this, is, this is a momentous episode. Not only did our guest, like, actually watch the show um, <laughs> on a regular basis, but... They brought something for us to fuck with us about, and I nailed the intro and the outro. I know, and right before we went live, we were just talking about how I'm so much more comfortable in beta, and you didn't fuck up at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that about? <laughs> <laughs>